everybody, all my followers, uh, welcome to another video. Um, okay, I've done a video on this uh, same car uh, some time ago, and uh, yes, this I didn't have time to uh, work on it again, but here we are today. Um, I've done a video on it uh, for the light switch that was not working. I had no lights for some time. Um, and at the time on that video, I'll leave um, a link on the description below. At uh, the time on that video, I mentioned uh, that the car was discharging the battery. Uh, so the first thing I've done was, I've done all the usual tests. I've tested the alternator, it was giving me 14 volts when uh, um, charging the battery, when the car was running, so that, that, that was good. And um, the next thing I've done was all the usual tests. I've started by uh, drop the SEM over there, the fuse box, and I've started to take one fuse at a time with the, the um, hemp meter uh, around uh, the cable over there. And uh, I remove every single fuse, every single relay uh, with no avail. It made no change. The car is discharging 0 0.46 amps, which is pretty much half an amp. Um, the battery, um, in about 12 hours, uh, the battery drains uh, enough to not start the car anymore. And uh, within two days, I can't even unlock the car anymore. So the first thing I've done was that, uh, that didn't work. Um, the electrical system on this car is quite simple. Uh, so that didn't work. I then moved uh, into a little, there's a relay box underneath the seat, under the carpet. That box was a little bit uh, rusty and um, some poor connections in there. Um, a little bit of uh, oxidization. So I've cleaned all that and everything, but once again made no difference. Uh, the next thing I've done, on the positive side of the battery, as you can see, the cable is, you have the, the gold cable, obviously that contains the clamp for the battery, and then you have that top cable that's uh, bolted in. So what I've done is with the amp meter connected in there, I've removed the cable that is uh, bolted in, uh, which is the cable that goes up to the SEM. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it fits anything else, but um, I removed that cable and it continued to discharge the battery. Now the other cable, the cable that comes all the way back, goes uh, straight to the back of the car and is the, the cable that connects to the battery, to, to the battery, sorry, to the alternator. So I went under the car and um, I started to follow that cable, uh, I took some um, under trays and stuff like that, I started to follow the cable and um, and as I was following the cable, I started to hear this um, sort of um, hum noise, like, um, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a constant hum noise. Um, and, um, and as I started to try to find out where the noise was coming from, um, I've noticed it was coming from the engine area. So I've, I, I've done that uh, hold, but uh, quite a uh, good test uh, with a long screwdriver I just put them out here and I've started to touch different parts on the engine and uh, when I touched the alternator definitely guys the noise was coming from there that uh, constant um, hum noise is coming from the alternator so what I believe is happening is that um, is that the or the alternator uh, or the well is the alternator but it might be the alternator itself or the current uh, regulator uh, that's that's gone and obviously although it's charging the battery uh, when it's not running is actually discharging the battery uh, unfortunately I couldn't I could not disconnect the alternator on its own because the, the place where is is where the alternator is um, and what I'm gonna do on this video uh, is gonna be um, on how to remove and refit the alternator and in the end we're going to measure uh, the drain on the battery make sure that it's not draining anymore I'm not I'm not going to be able to show you now the draining 
because actually uh, I might be able to because there's still some charge on the battery. Just hold on a second, let me grab my uh, hemp meter. I'm afraid it's showing uh, all zeros. As you can see, the battery is completely discharged. Look at that. Key on. Key on, look. It's nothing happening. I've turned the key on. You can see the lights, they kind of came on. And the key is out and they are not even going off now. Uh, the the kilometers or the mileage uh, just went away. Yeah, it's too, too discharged. Uh, so it's not really... There's nothing on the battery at the moment, so obviously not going to measure nothing. But... Um, but uh, yeah, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, uh, how to remove uh, the the alternator, and hopefully I will get the alternator a few days later, um, and uh, I'll be able to show you how to put it back on. Although to put it back on is going to be just the reverse, um, but then obviously we can then measure and make sure we have the the correct uh, battery draining when the car is off. Okay, so we are now under the car, uh, the alternator is right there, as you can see, and the way I'm going to try to remove this alternator, I don't know if that's the right way, um, but uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove the sump, which hopefully will give me room to get the alternator out. So I'm going to drain the oil, remove the sump, and see how it goes. Okay, so the sump is now out. Um, I'm already halfway through the process. I took uh, the alternator is now loose. So as you can see, there's no sump anymore. It's a little bit windy. Oops. Let's see if I can show you. A little bit of this. So the sump is out. There's a few uh, bolts around. You take them off, and you split this. Uh, the next step is obviously there's a bracket here I should have shown you that before uh, there's a bracket here uh, one uh, nut holds the alternator to the bracket where you adjust the tension then you have two bolts one goes here and one goes in between right above this pulley here somewhere here there's another bolt that holds the whole bracket in place yeah then you have a bolt right at the top a big one that obviously holds the alternator in a kind of a hinge, so you can obviously turn a nut and twist slightly to adjust on a bracket. I've now twisted the alternator in order to disconnect uh, the cables, and uh, after that, uh, it should come through this gap here, and I should be able to take it out. Hey guys, so here here we have the new alternator, just arrived today. Uh, the old one is gone. Uh, I believe they used the old one to, I don't know, to rebuild, maybe. I don't know. And uh, there is one thing that I want to show you. I haven't uh, connected, the, the, the cables for the battery are disconnected. Um, and I've uh, I separated them at the back, make sure they're not going to touch the chassis. And what I'm going to show you is that without the alternator connected, there's no draining on the battery. So I, I had these cables to charge the battery. As you have seen at the start of the video, the battery was completely drained. I should probably have done this to show you the draining on the battery, the 0 0.46 uh, hemps being drained. Um, I, I really do apologize, I haven't done that, but I'm gonna show you that without the alternator connected, there's no drain at all. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna disconnect the cable that is charging the positive and as you can see and what I'm going to do is as you can see there's no discharge at the moment there's all zeros I'm going to turn the ignition on ignition on and uh, as we can see we, st we start to have a little bit of uh, discharge in there I'm gonna Like 
So if I turn to apologize, I had the amp clamp, the amp meter clamp connected on the wrong cable. Uh, so yeah, so as, as I was saying, so we have no uh, drain. Now the key, the ignition is off. Let's gonna turn the ignition on, and we have 0, 0.0. Hang on, I'm on a 20 amp scale. Let me let me put it on a 2 amp. There is. So we have like half an amp at the moment. Ignition on. There's not a lot of uh, stuff consuming, but let's say for example I turn the HVAC. We start to have a little bit more, as you can see. But uh, let's gonna turn the ignition off. That that's when the car used to take 0 0.46. There we go, all gone. So it's not taking nothing at the moment. Um, so everything is the same as before guys, the only thing that is not in place at the moment is the alternator. So what I'm going to do next is, um, I'm going to disconnect all these uh, the cables from the battery, leave these cables charging the battery and, uh, and hopefully uh, the battery will be charged uh, when I come when I'm ready to start the engine. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we are going to uh, put the new alternator uh, uh, in place. We're going to fit the new alternator and uh, and yeah I'm going to take you through the process. Okay guys so as you can see the alternator is now in place. Uh, I just came straight from inside the car. So there is the cables uh, from the alternator. There's one cable there another one there the alternator came through here um, but I tell you why it's, it's, it's tricky to get it out uh, you need to force it to come through you need to push the engine slightly uh, force the engine um, that way a little bit to, to create a little bit of a cap here uh, and the alternator only comes in in, a, in one position um, because of the the, the uh, because of that areas that those brackets uh, so you need to turn in a way that it is really tricky to work here but it can be done uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the new alternator back in the new alternator is now in place uh, well it's just there it's not in place yet but it's connected as you can see uh, the cables are now connected and uh, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to connect the battery and uh, see if we have any drain. Just to, just to prove the point, uh, let's gonna connect the battery and uh, check if we have any drain. Okay, so at the moment there is no drain, but the drain always used to come back after the ignition on and off again. So ignition on. So we have 0.724, but obviously ignition on. It's gonna turn ignition off. And there is no drain. So that's it. It's pretty sure it was the alternator, but that just proved the point before I put everything back on. And what we're gonna do next is just that. Finish to uh, assembly the alternator in place. So the new alternator is now in place. Uh, all the bolts have been tight, so tighten, so everything is so it should be. And what I'm doing now, as you might be able to see, is I'm scraping these old uh, silicone and then we're gonna clean these with a the solvent make sure the new silicone is gonna stick uh, there correctly so that's what I'm doing now, I'm using a blade to scrape these off so we're gonna scrape this, clean the sump uh, a new layer of uh, sealant and put the sump back on 
The pan is now in place, as you can see. Okay, the new alternator right at the back. And now we're gonna put some oil. And uh, let's gonna try. The car is now running, as you can see in there. And uh, one last test. Uh, make sure it's not discharging. Take the key out, and that's it, no discharging. That's it. So, this is how you, this is how you replace the alternator on a Smart for 2. Um, I know I didn't show you how to trace the fault down, but uh, like I explained at the other side of the video, uh, I've done that like that. Um, so yeah guys, um, I, I don't know, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope there's some information on it that might be helpful to someone out there. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, comments, please uh, put them below. And uh, like always, thank you for watching.